The Riddle of the Earth, Chapter 9 Size and Solid Composition of These Bodies How great in substance comets may be is undetermined, but we should not dismiss as fantastic the enormous size attributed by Seneca to the 47 BC comet, or that of Lexels of 1770. While the size is relative to distance, yet undoubtedly sunspots have been measured thousands of miles in diameter, and when we possess within our own solar system such immense bodies as Neptune or Saturn, and on the assumption that comets are planets in a state of disintegration, it is not astonishing that they should be sometimes of enormous size. It is apparent that such bodies are not attracted to the Earth whatever may be assumed in regard to the great outer planets, because such, if such were the case, the world's history, when we can read by its rocks and stones, would lie very differently. I think that should be very, very differently. Oh, no, sorry. Let me read that again. Uh, when we can read by its rocks and stones, would lie very different. <sighs> that should be very different. Check your spelling, anyway. Sorry about the confusion. But it is certain that in due course such a collision will be the appointed end of our planet. The normal procedure, however, is that a comet is directly attracted to the Sun and to the Sun alone, as we can trace this same magnetic attraction in a minor degree, whereby a meteor, if apparently it comes within certain range of the Earth, is attracted to the region of an active volcano. The evidence before us entirely discounts the theories of certain astronomers that a comet is a loose aggregation of small bodies, as Howe contends, or of small meteors about the size of peas, as Neeson thinks, both these views being the generality of opinion among astronomers for we have an overwhelming amount of evidence to the effect that individual meteors may project rocks or stones of enormous volume and size, such as mentioned in the case of Girolo, with its six volcanic cones, scoria and basalt, besides sh such instances as have been cited of meteors, leaving considerable deposits, there are the cases of rock pinnacles or blocks per chess, upon often inaccessible heights, and, for example, above the lake of New... New... How do you say this? Neuchatel, I guess, Switzerland. N-E-U-C-H-A-T-E-L. Neuchatel. Where, perched on a spur a thousand feet up, is a huge granite boulder, foreign to the locality, which weighs about 15,000 tonnes. In the face of such evident facts, when too Sir Robert Bell regarded the Chaco meteorite as a small particle broken off from a considerable or vast body, it is reg regrettable that men engaged in scientific research should be guilty of such loose, inaccurate and misleading generalities. Judging from meteorites and meteors, the, the nucleus of a comet is as solid as the core of the Earth and may be considerably bigger.